Energy is released when bonds are made. But energy must be put into molecules to break bonds. If there's more making than breaking, then a reaction will be exothermic, and we can use the heat of all to raise the temperature of what remains after reaction. So let's use this information to calculate the final temperature after the reaction of magnesium nitride with water to form nitrogen, hydrogen, and magnesium oxide. We're going to start off with 15 grams of magnesium nitride and a kilogram of water for a system that's held at 300 Kelvin and a constant pressure, call it atmospheric pressure. We know the heat capacities of all the components and the enthalpy of reaction. Notice the reaction is highly exothermic. So, as always, start with a balanced chemical reaction. And a balanced chemical reaction includes all of the phase designations. Once we have a balanced chemical reaction, we can determine what the limiting reagent is, which in this case is going to be magnesium nitride, because the quantity of magnesium nitride is far smaller than the quantity of water with a one-to-one -one stoichiometry here between those reaction reagents. So magnesium oxide is our limiting reagent and water is available in great excess. The amount of water is going to be decreasing just a little bit with lots of water left over. All of the magnesium nitride reacts and therefore we can determine the moles of 8N2 remaining afterward, just a half from the stoichiometry of reaction, times the number of moles uh, of magnesium nitride that reacted, whereas the quantity of hydrogen and magnesium oxide, those will be the same as the number of moles of magnesium nitride after complete conversion. So we know the composition of the system, and now we can determine the heat evolved in the reaction. Remember, the heat evolved to constant pressure is equal to the enthalpy change during the reaction. And so the heat evolved is just going to be the number of moles that reacted times delta H for the reaction. And the heat absorbed by the components that remain after reaction, that's going to be equal and opposite to the heat evolved by the reaction itself. Moles times delta H of reaction will give us 227.2 kilojoules available to heat the system. Now the heat that's evolved, that's going to be equal to this integral over moles times heat capacity times dt. The heat capacity we're going to take as a constant. We know the number of moles, that's a constant. That's going to come out of the integral, so we get a nice simple relationship. The heat evolved is going to be equal to the number of moles times the heat capacity times delta T. However, we have multiple components in our system, and the heat's going to be distributed over all of these components. They're in contact with each other. They have good thermal contact. So delta T is the same for all of the components, but the number of moles and the heat capacity will be different for each one. So we've got to sum over those. Now let's solve for delta T, the heat evolved or absorbed by the components left after, divided by this sum of moles times heat capacity. Remember, though, that the quantity of water was very large compared to the quantity of all the other components. Because of that, the contribution to the denominator of water is much larger than the contribution from all the other components. And in fact, Within the accuracy of our system, within the accuracy of, say, three significant figures, if we took the initial temperature as 300 exactly, and we add to that 54 Kelvin, we're going to get 354 Kelvin as our final temperature, regardless of whether we considered the contribution from all the other products, or whether we just took the, the contribution from water because water is available in such large excess. So we're easily able then to calculate the final state of the system, both in terms of its composition and temperature. The final temperature, 354 Kelvin, 
and notice a very good reason to perform reactions in solution with a large excess of solvent is to dissipate the heat of reaction from exothermic reactions. A large excess of solvent gives the system a high heat capacity so the temperature change is not too great and indeed so that we keep the temperature change below the boiling point of the water.